Okay, chat, we've been putting this off. We gotta talk about our final thoughts on Justice for All, the Phoenix Wright game, the second of the trilogy that we've been playing. And, uh... Yeah. <laughs> feel, feel that lack of enthusiasm. I, I feel like when I first played this game before I streamed it, I don't think my opinion has changed since then. This game is not good. I see why I quit playing a long time ago. It's not the worst game we've played on stream, surprisingly, but it's definitely very disappointing. It, it loses a lot of the endearing factor that I think the other game has. So let's talk about more about why I think the game didn't work in a non-spoiler way first before we go into spoilers. In a very broad sense, these are some of the worst cases that are in the series by far. Without going into too many details, they have issues with things like unbelievable coincidences leading into the solving of the case. Like, absolutely unbelievable coincidence. Whether it's an action taken by the victim, writing something as they die, or something like the angle of so-and-so influences this thing and therefore they didn't see this, but then this really happened and it looked like this happened, but this didn't really happen. Number one, the, the cases do not feel very grounded, in particular with the focus on more of the supernatural side on the whole in this game. They introduce a new mechanic early on, which I think does improve the investigation phase of the game where you have a Magatama and you can quote-unquote see the Psylocks of the other characters, or the Psyche Locks, I forgot how you say, how you say it offhand. Um, and that's kind of like your way of knowing you need to follow up with that person for more information. So you, so the, the positive thing is you get these things, you find the evidence, you bring it back to them, you solve the lock by presenting evidence that would unlock the truth. And I think that part of the game is good. Where it fails, literally everything else. Music is not as good as the first games overall. It's okay. It, it's simply okay. The best themes are the ones that were in the first game, period. I think it has a big problems with characters, like not going into which specific case it is, but wow, oh wow, there is a lot of questionable, there's questionably drawn characters. I do not feel comfortable with the idea of like a young girl character being aged up to have breasts in the video game. That was pretty uncomfortable uh, throughout the game series. There's a lot of weird things going on in the case that are pretty much borderline grooming slash somebody basically that is like 17 slash, yeah, 17, I think they were 17. I don't think they were 18, uh, being courted by older men and I don't mean by like they're 19 or 20, like they're they're in their 30s. It's really, really questionable stuff in this game. Not to mention that a lot of the cases are just way overstuffed with cameos. And those cameos more often than not repeat literally verbatim the same role that they had in the first game. They have the same gimmick. They don't do anything new with it for the most part. There are too many joke characters overall in most of the, the cases. I think overall the only case I thought was okay involved the least amount of joke characters and no supernatural powers, more or less. Whereas the other ones I think were just not good. They weren't really good from a mystery standpoint. They had a lot of tedium. The final gimmick, without going into major spoilers, of needing to delay the trial the reason will be told to you in that case uh, was horrible. It stretched out the game by eons of characters just endlessly talking in loops about how they need to stall for time, about how, oh no, we're, you know, we can't let them break for court. Like, those things really added a level of tedium. Plus, there's a couple of witnesses that added a lot of difficulty spikes. Like, one of them was essentially, like, if you made the witness cry, you instantly lose the court trial by pressing them too much. We managed to avoid that in our playthrough, thankfully, but I know a lot of people complain about that in the game's least favorite infamous case involving circuses. I'll leave it there. 
Um, but yeah, I just feel like start to finish, the game was just much weaker. It didn't have a bonus case like the first game did, which is not a make or break. But when you have like three really bad cases back to back and nothing to really look forward to at the end of the game, it was just a whopping disappointment. It, to me, it was like one of those things where there were like a couple of standout moments in the entirety of the game, but overall, very skippable. It, it, does, it does introduce a character. That's basically the extent of the plot of knowing about Pearl. So if you want to save yourself some time, go look up that character. If you want to understand what they do regarding their plot, just read a summary and then skip the game. I feel like that's the only character that has any relevancy in anything that we just did. They introduced a new prosecutor who is just ex increasingly violent, and that's her gimmick is she whips people, Francesca, or Francesca, excuse me, Francesca. And uh, I don't really find her endearing, so she just feels like a much weaker prosecutor overall, character-wise, compared to uh, Edgeworth, who we don't really see much of pretty much throughout the game. We will not go into the reasons in the non-spoiler, but just be aware of that. Um, is there anything else before we jump into spoilers? Because I feel like in order to really accurately break down why this game failed, we need to go for a case-by-case -case basis because there are just so many levels of detail of why the game didn't work. Oh, it, it didn't have the annoying 3D rotate segments from the first game that were added in. So I'm happy that wasn't there. Overall, though, there was like a lot of backtracking at several points that was a little more involved than the first game. So going between like five rooms and needing to go like room A, then room B, then room C, then room D, then room E, and then go room A to room D to room C to room B to room A was pretty annoying. And you had to do that in several of the cases at several points. I would say on the whole, I guess without going into spoilers, most of the villains were really not that interesting. So if you're looking for like a really fun evil character, arguably maybe one case has the character that maybe would be interesting. But I think the problem is like the game's lack of red herrings, like possible people that could be the culprit more specifically, and the lack of like mystery over the weapons used with maybe one minor exception doesn't really make it strong from like a mystery standpoint and if you're just kind of going through you know the motions with it which is what I felt like by the time we got to the end of the game I just don't find most of the joke characters endearing like I don't mind having like one joke character a case but like did we really need four did we <laughs> did we chat I don't think we did and unfortunately, the humor of those roles fell really flat for me. I think most chat would agree. Uh, the allegedly funny characters were not funny. I don't even think I got a like ironic laugh or like a ha from them. It was pretty bad. So them kind of clowning around, sometimes literally and figuratively, uh, just kind of made the case take much longer than it was. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's like okay to have like a bit of levity with some of the scenes. I understand it can be like serious all the time, but like when you when you go too far to the other extreme, it's kind of bad. So Chad, I, I don't think I could talk anymore with spoilers. I don't recommend the game in the trilogy. I would recommend just looking up the wiki. I would not play it again. I overall only had fun very briefly, but oh boy, those last cases in particular were atrocious. So that's the non-spoiler side. Let, let's break down going into more character details, why cases worked or didn't work, for those that are curious. Uh, case one is the classic tutorial case, where essentially Phoenix wakes up with amnesia and forgets the whole court process, which is like their way of re-explaining how this court system works for new players, potentially. And they introduce probably my only favorite character in the game. I want to say it's Maggie Bird, I think is how it's said where she's like seemingly the only competent assistant we've had in the whole series. And she's like a police assistant under uh, Gumshoe. The problem with the case, it was like, 
That one was just ridiculous. Like, the guy fell from a long height and then I think broke his neck, essentially, but then was able to scrawl messages in the ground. So already, like, the belief in the case is kind of strained from the get-go. I, I do find it funny, though, you know, the game talking about phone booths and things like that, where you can see they're trying to modernize it a bit by adding in cell phones in some scenarios. But uh, it doesn't quite doesn't quite mesh up with the rest of the game series, which I find funny. So overall, that case was okay. The prosecutor was just whatever, mostly forgettable. I think it was the same one, uh, Payne or whatever his name was from the first game. I think it was the same one. But either way, it was a very forgettable case. Bananas. Yeah, people will remember bananas from that. I think from the standpoint of the second case onwards, uh, where, you know, you, you could shake off tutorial cases are not going to be the most amazing thing. But for that to be the highlight of the game is just really sad. I'm going to be real honest with you, because then we go into the second case. And the problem starts with introducing the young character Pearl, who they have take the role of Maya. because She's accused of murder, so she can't be your assistant. And she's on trial, so she's not with you most of the time because she's not allowed to leave the jail. So they come up with the Mangatama system so you could do more interrogations and do things with her. The problem is this character is so damn annoying, and the fact that they age her up when she transforms into other people is just kind of uncomfortable. Just let Mia die. Let her spirit move on to another dimension. <laughs> I beg of you, please let this character rest in peace. It's just one of those things, chat. Like, please let this character move on into another world. So you're kind of left with the sense that you have a really peppy, really naive character that is yet another joke character. And then you kind of play her into a scenario where there are no other culprits, literally. There was literally the killer who did it, Morgan, and that was it. Every other character clearly could not be the murderer in that case. Like, it, there, there's, there's no one else it could be, and even if you had guessed it was Morgan initially, you still wouldn't be wrong because she was still involved in the murder. The whole pick this pick the side where like, oh, where was the victim located at the time of the blah blah blah? And then if you select where they really were, because a rational person could reason that a bullet hole six inches off the floor would probably come from the box behind the curtain, for example. If you select that, the game goes out of its way to chastise you. And then in the next segment, they're like, oh wait, that's where it came from, duh! And you'll get points off. It's so dumb. <laughs> It's so dumb. The game punishes you for using your brain. Like, how else would you get a bullet hole six inches off the ground and that also hit the person, potentially? Like, it, like, it would have to be something on the floor, right? Like, it just... You just kind of throw your hands in the air. Then you're not allowed to investigate that for, like, three quarters of the trial. You have the most ridiculous incinerator where nobody guarded the incinerator and they just straight up burned the evidence in between. That was ridiculous. That that was really bad, honestly. And and as I said before, there wasn't really like a very convincing alibi from the very obvious killer. Especially since like if you investigate the bed that they're sleeping in, they're like, oh, I thought a person was here, but it's just pillows. But then like your character doesn't realize that means the person could have left and not been sleeping there until like the actual end of the trial is maddening. Like you could get that dialogue in the first investigation phase, let alone the second one or day two of the trial. Like that is like actually bonkers to me that you could do that and you could piece together the whole sleeping thing and people moved, etc., etc. Just actually stupid, actually stupid. So that case was not good from a setup. I think chat liked uh, Morgan's hair. I think the freakouts, I guess, were okay for the killers. They were okay. Some were like more gross than like really amazing. Which we'll be jumping ahead a bit. The I'll give a hand, it involves scratching the face. That one was kind of gross. Uh, but from that standpoint, you know, case two, not great. Again, it involves Maya a lot and it involves Honestly, just kind of too many joke characters, like Lotta Heart shows up there, for example, and Pearls is kind of a comedic character. So it's like, ugh. 
And Maya's also kind of a joke character too, because she cracks a lot of jokes. So it's like, okay, there's not a lot of people taking it super seriously. Sometimes Maya will take it seriously in jail, but most of the time, no. Then they like just kind of dodge the whole question about how the spiritual channeling works. And that ends up being a very large part of the case. And it's just like, man, it's just so annoying. It's just like, it's like, I think if they move away from the supernatural, I think it'll be much stronger. But it was eventually just like, oh, we're just going to channel all these things. Or, oh, she can't possibly be channeling this person because she was dreaming and it's impossible to dream. And it's just like, these things are just kind of taken into the court face value. There's like a whole plot point with like fake evidence from the whip prosecutor whose gimmick is to whip people basically every three lines and say foolish fools. Like her catchphrase is amusing, but like the rest of the character is not, sadly. And then like, oh, Chad almost made me, I almost glossed over one of them. Yeah, chat. Is, is hmm yes in that case? Hold on, which, which case was he in? I know who you're talking about. Which specific case was he in? Oh, it, oh, was that? Oh, it was that one. You're right. It was that one because it involved the doctors. You're right. Yeah, and then they inter introduced Director Hadi, which is one of the worst, one of the worst characters they've introduced in the game. He is like really an uncomfortable appearance. He just, hmm, yeses constantly. He's, like, hitting on women and, like, spying on them, pretending to be a doctor slash director. And it's just, it's really not funny. So, again, like, you just keep adding to, like, the total number of characters where it's just, like... And he's always, like, constantly scratching and itching. Like, he has some kind of drug addiction. Like, honestly, that's what I think they're emulating. And it's just ridiculous. It's just actually completely ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I was thinking the final case. He's also in the final case, which is super unfortunate. So, yeah, a lot of just really intensely unlikable new introduced characters. And it, it just really, really, really drags the game. And a lot of the times the evidence we get from those characters don't really... We don't, like, really, we didn't really need those characters to advance. Kind of unfortunate. Only time I felt bad for Francesca. Yeah, that's true. Or Franziska, because it can lead to Z. Yeah, there's kind of like an ongoing gimmick thing between her and Gumshoe, which again, it's more comedic routines, where he's always running from her whipping, and it's always a joke that he's out of money. Like again, like there's just a lot of running gags that just aren't funny. So, like, you, you just know that's going to be the punchline. So, like, if you don't laugh the first time, be ready for that to happen, like, every time you see the character. Just, like, completely ludicrous. Oh, the other guy's name was Winston Payne, like, Winston Payne from the first case. I'm just seeing if I missed any other characters. Don't think so. Yeah, Richard Wellington in the first case was a forgettable villain. The Eeny Meeny and Mimi Miney whole thing was pretty annoying. She plays like, again, she plays kind of like a joke character for the most part. When she actually gets angry, it's more interesting. But man, she has a really another annoying character gimmick. Where she's like, oh, that's like totally there. Like, I don't remember. Duh. Like, she... It's literally like you Valley Girl speak it, and it will absolutely fit that character. She's meant to be super obnoxious. And so you're dealing with all these characters that are like, ugh. Yeah, see? Yeah, you blocked her out. <laughs> and that's why I got a double check. And then you and then like you put Lot of Heart, you have Director Hadi, you have the Eeny Meeny Miney, then you have like the whole thing with the back and forth with Gumshoe and Francesca. Like that's a lot of really unnecessary gags in the game. And we're only on case two that just kind of drag it out. I guess it's like somewhat interesting, like the the real identity of the killer, quote unquote. That's like the closest to case two being interesting. But again, the case mostly falls flat because it's it's very obvious who the villain characters are. So just immediately you're tuned into them 
And honestly, your first expectation might just be the entire case, but it takes uh, Phoenix Dimwit like literally hours to figure it out. <laughs> so it's like brutal. And then we have what I consider possibly the worst case in the series so far, and definitely one of the worst cases. It, it's hard to say if I like the last case less than this one. We have the absolutely horrible circus case absolutely horrible you're representing a defendant max galactica who has a very annoying gimmick who they also talk about all the the you know the three pieces that bring up his costume because this is it's a whole thing for a plot point later he's just a very unlikable character start to finish he, he pretty much just plays like a very flamboyant kind of character and he's just kind of like Oh, yo, oh, they must be wanting to take my autograph when he's in jail and he's arrested versus realizing he's in trouble kind of things. And none of these characters have a satisfying arc. Like, what did he learn? That I'm going to stick with the circus even though everybody hates me and I'm not going to do anything to fix it other than to spend more time with you? That was his character arc? I was saying before, there were little things where you could have shown like the magician side was definitely more of an act and that he was trying to do the right thing. Like little bits of writing would have made the character a lot more interesting and likable. Like imagine if before the ringleader died, when he was talking about negotiating salary, what if he was negotiating the salary of the other characters and he was trying to make sure they get paid more? And so he's talking about ways for his salary to be split because of like technicalities. Like wouldn't that have made him like not, it wouldn't have completely fixed him, but wouldn't that have been an interesting reveal from like a personality arc to show that he actually cared about them the whole time rather than just coming across as a huge dick for like the whole case? Because honestly, I don't even think he really made it up to them in a satisfying way throughout that entire case. Like they hated him, we hated him, then it's just kind of like, well, I better make the circus the most memorable th memorable thing ever because I'm number one. Like, that was the takeaway? What a bad character. Then you have... Then you have the unfortunate Regina Berry, who is the daughter of the circus ringleader. And she is the character that is presumably groomed by not one, but two different characters where presumably in her workplace environment, they're hitting on her the whole time. She's 17. I think, uh, what was his name? It was, what was his name? Benjamin Woodman, I think was his name, was like in his 30s. And then Max Galactica is like in his mid 20s. And both of them are crushing on her. And they keep describing her as like innocent, naive, like a, like a young girl. And those are words you don't really want to hear in an adult romance. It just, it, it has really bad connotations. Really, really bad connotations. Like to the point she didn't understand what death was. Like this is a character where like middle-aged men are hitting on her. Like this is, this is messed up. Like honestly, really messed up. And then she didn't seem to have like any grasp of reality. So take, take that as you will but it was a very horrible portrayal of the character. And again, it led to a lot of really uncomfortable things that were implied throughout, including, I, th I think, the, didn't the judge also hit on her at one point? Or am I misremembering? Which was, I remember he made a comment. I don't know if it was like hitting on her, but he was commenting about how good she looked and the way, the way it came off was not comfortable seeing like a guy in his 50s talking to the 17 year old in regards to that, if I remember correctly. But the more important thing is that she's probably the most likable character in the whole thing, and she's not likable. <laughs> I like that there's actually a plot arc where they kill a lion. I'm supposed to sympathize with a character that got a lion killed? Holy, what a, what a bad choice. They're like, oh, so the lion was, because of the fact that it smelled like this, the lion ended up sneezing because it was pepper, and they thought that the other person was being attacked, so they killed the lion and put down the lion of the circus show. And then they just like go like, oh yeah, that just happens. I was like, excuse me? What? 
<laughs> Leon was done dirty in that case. Poor lion. What a what a travesty of a plot arc. And we haven't even talked about some of these other characters. So we briefly talked about Bat. He's the one that gets bitten and is the big uh, reason why Acro does bad things. But the thing is, is like none of the other characters are feasibly the one who did it, quote unquote. And then they choose not to reveal Acro for like half of the trial. And then as soon as he shows up, you know he did it. Like, he's the, he's in the only location where it would make sense. He's the only person with motive. So again, just another failure for like red herrings. Yeah. And then Regina's saying like she'll wait by Bat's side until he comes out of his coma. I'm like, gross. Honestly, just the whole story itself is gross involving the lion. But yeah, then you have the incredibly unfunny Mo. Horrible, horrible character. Has a couple segments against him in trial where if you if you press him and he makes a bad joke, the judge just literally fails you on the spot. We managed to dodge that. We got really lucky, honestly. Um, and then you have Benjamin Woodman, who has a puppet named Trillo. And Trillo also hits on Regina. In addition to Woodman, I think. And they have like a wedding ring kind of thing. And they, they never resolve that plot. By the way, chat, remember that they never resolve that. She, she presumably falls for sort of Max Galactica, but wants to wait for Bat. I don't know if in a love sense or just in general, but they don't even talk about Benjamin Woodman. He did not need to be in that trial. So having somebody where like the dummy is the smart one berating the quiet guy for being dumb. Like that's a whole gag. Then you have the clown, Mo, who just makes bad jokes. Just brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal chat. There's also unnecessary hijinks involving money and region where they attack and or rob the player. Again, just like a lot of gimmicks and gags instead of mystery or like interesting story components. Like they're clearly throwaway characters. They're never coming back kind of things. They're not they're not interesting witnesses, or at least I hope they don't come back. But <laughs> let me rephrase. Hopefully they never come back because <laughs> they were awful and extremely unlikable. And honestly, I don't really have too much else to say about the third case other than just uncomfortable in subject matter. Kinda messed up throughout. I kind of sided with the killer on that one in that arc where I was like, yeah, screw the circus for getting the lion killed and also uh, the brother in a Komoto situation because the other person put Pepper near the lion and it looked like it bit him and then the other guy lost his legs. I was like, damn, Acro, sh <laughs> Acro should have done them all in. <laughs> right, chat? Screw this. Give Acro the wheelchair and uh, let him mow everybody down. And then finally, we have the fourth case. It has... Ugh. As I said before, too many gags and gimmicks going on. You have Wendy Oldbag returns. A lot of heart is there. You have the whip character, Francisca. You kind of get... Sort of jokey responses with Matt on guard until the reveal. So I'll count him as like half a joke character. Then you have Will Powers back, who again is... Not a joke character, but just kind of okay in it. It's just gotta, it's just one of those things, chat, where I think just like there's too many g gags and stuff going on in the turnabout big top. Very well, my turnabout, the final case is more really, really long. So you pretty much know who did it because the game tells you, even though the, even though Phoenix is literally in such hard denial that like three people telling him who did it is not enough to convince him who did it. So like him trying to finally figure it out, Matt on guard hired the killer and Shelly the killer is the killer, aka the dumbest thing to get the character to realize ever is honestly fascinating. It had some interesting scenes where you're trying to piece together the order of events. Like when Adrian Andrews, the manager for Matt on guard, um, goes through and slowly lies about things and picking apart her testimony. I thought that was probably one of the more interesting parts of that trial. Otherwise, it literally is just like, oh no, we can't reveal too much information to get Matt on guard to be found guilty, or else otherwise Maya will die. 
and they'll say that over and over and over and over and over. I think he said it no less than 15 times. Just him, let alone the other characters, because other characters can say it. And let alone when Gumshoe has told it and he says it, let alone when the ridiculous, but wait, there's more of the final trial where everybody kept coming in with new evidence to stall the trial even longer. Yeah, the Maya, the 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 moment where you play as Maya, Maya would potentially be interesting, but it's like crowded out with like really stupid moments. Like you're literally in a single lamp room where you could see the entire room minus like maybe the extreme corners and Maya's like it's too dark to see anything or you'll go in another room and there's like literally two lights on they're like it's too dark I can't make out these details and you're like are you blind <laughs> like like wait how can you not read what's on the books I don't understand you're like you're like three feet away from the light that's on are you stupid like <laughs> Are you just illiterate and don't want to admit it? I don't understand. Yeah, like the, the constant shenanigans back and forth where you're trying to stall and you're constantly putting blame on people that clearly didn't do it, which is arguably much more messed up than anything else, shows just like how low Phoenix will sink, essentially. It was his worst trial by far. I really hate that the moral of the story is he can't believe that people would actually commit crimes if he defends them. And I like that he only is like really in agreement that Matt didn't do it because he asked a very stupid question that obviously had a loophole to it. Whether Matt on guard killed the other person where it's like, no, he hired the killer. This isn't this isn't like a plot hole. This is really obvious. And it takes him until literally the final part of the final trial for him to realize it. Justice for all by any means necessary, yeah. It was a little better once Edgeworth got back. There was a lot of really honestly unnecessary hatred between Phoenix and Edgeworth in that. It feels like they just let things kind of happen off screen and it was just like a really stupid misunderstanding. Like the whole like Edgeworth writing like, you know, Edgeworth is no longer of this world or something. Whatever stupid line he wrote where people just assume he killed himself. And then he's like, no, he's been alive the whole time. He just means he's dead it as a prosecutor, but he'll be reborn. It's just... That payoff was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. So it's kind of culminating everything they've been building up to in the prior cases to that. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Just really weak. And again, it's another case where there's not many people that could have been the killer. Like, it's literally between Matt on guard and Shelly to kill her, and spoilers, both of them were involved in it, so you'd probably be right, like, in a 50-50 guess, because, like, no one else is reasonably the killer. So you have, like, Lotta Hart, Wendy Oldbag, so you have two really, really annoying Joe characters, so it's kind of like channeling their clown energy. Uh, kind of back to back, and you have to interrogate them a lot. And honestly, Lotta Hart barely did anything in the case. She testifies once, and basically we never have to talk to her again for the rest of the case. She could have been any other character, honestly. The fact she came back twice is just really silly. Old Bag has a very annoying gimmick where she puts on, like, a space helmet, and then does rat a tat 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 and shoots with the space gun, rather than answer your questions. Again, I just feel like the game could generally be summarized as, there are a lot of annoying gimmick characters, and it just draws the time out. Oh, yeah, and Dr... Sorry, I forgot uh, Dr. Hardy slash the director. We mentioned him just a moment ago. So our, one of our least favorite characters from 2 is there. So you have three really powerful, unfunny characters. And I would put Francisca, Gumshoe, and... Pearl into like a... They don't count as a four by themselves. But with their powers combined, they will be annoying planet <laughs> kind of things. <laughs> like, because like more than half of the time they're just doing jokes. Not They're not full joke characters, but all three of them with three joke characters is like, oh my gosh, that is too much in a case. Please, I beg of you. Will Powers was probably the least annoying and terrible defendant. So we'll give him that. Oh, well, no, no, that's not true. Because Maggie Bird was technically the defendant. Maggie Bird was the least annoying. I actually like that character. Followed up by Will Powers. 
Oh yeah, Pearl's forehead is something else. She should read her forehead out as like a billboard. That thing is ridiculous. You could put like two hands above your eyes. Her head, her, her forehead was bigger than that. It was insane. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> and it was, it wasn't even like hair was partially covering. Like your hands wouldn't even touch hair. Like that forehead was ridiculous. So yeah, just a lot of really awful, awful things in there. So many potential games of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> I almost feel like doing a drawn image of that. Just put tic-tac-toe. If she shows up in the next game, we'll have tic-tac-toe pearl in there. Generally one piece female when it comes to forehead size, only one step down from Jolanda. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, uh, you know, Madame Guard had a nice villain reveal, I guess, where he dropped his disguise. But again, like, you, you had to kind of know he did it, right? Like, there's, uh, like, there's, he's the only character that would have had motive to hire the assassin. Like, it's just one of those things where just like, if you think about it without even reviewing any evidence of the case, it's like, yes, a professional assassin came in. I wonder who of the many people they introduced could have killed him. Is it the horribly annoying Wendy Oldbag? Is it the defendant who's so meek he could barely speak? Like, maybe, maybe you thought it was Adrian Andrews at most? Like, those are the only other characters that are introduced. <laughs> like, that's it? <laughs> Like, you thought maybe Adrian Andrews might have done it? Maybe? I don't know. I, I would still think it would be Matt on guard. Especially when the assassin straight up tells you, you must find my client not guilty. So, like, if you had any doubts up until, like, literally the first prison scene, I feel like before the first trial, you know how it's there. It's true. The only good part of the whole game, honestly, was the bears. The, the room of bears was so stupid. I love that the one that is like literally like literal bear size and is a literal bear, not a stuffed bear or a robot or anything else, is a uh, part of the plot. And again, the whole thing where like, fortunately Francesca gets shot because honestly, another case with her is just miserable. <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> but unfortunately it brings in director Hottie. Oof, just oof, chat. So painful to get through. So anyway, I think that I think that covers all the cases and details. Why I didn't like them, why I don't feel like the the side characters were interesting. The sheer density of specific joke characters. Again, a lot of backtrack, in particular with the circus. We have to go from Acro's room into the lobby into the other area to then go into the uh to go into the side rooms kind of things like there is at least like a four to five room transition and you would keep going from Moe's room and then go back one and then go back one and then go back one and then go up one and then go up one over and over and over in the circus case it's like going from the cafeteria for example is just like four rooms over and over and over what's the opposite of the silver lining Franny got shot but it brings Hadi into the mix yeah I, I find the director much worse than Francesca that was like only arguably the only time I felt anything towards Francesca. Her whole character arc, arc was irrelevant. Where it's like, oh, I'm not doing it because of my father. It's because you're just not a worthy prosecutor. And you've embarrassed the, like, I, I don't know. I guess it's a little better than her trying to outright defend her atrocious father. I guess. I guess. But yeah. Not anything I'm really gonna miss in the game. I mean, I hope if they're gonna do the Magatama stuff, that's fine in the next game. I just really hope that Pearls is not in literally every case outside of the first one. Pearl, her and Maya together are just like, ugh. Like, honestly, I d their humor does not click with me at all. They're not as bad as like the clown or like the ventriloquist humor, but it's like down there. It's like, I understand what the joke is. It's just not funny. Yeah, let me rest in peace, in peace, please. So this makes me more interested in trying spin-offs that don't involve these characters. Because I think there's like a core system that is somewhat interesting to play. The problem is that, you know, it's not a really good mystery. And it's bogged down by like a really high amount of unnecessary Joe characters. So I think that's why certain games spin-offs that are more serious click with me more. 
Because I just don't feel like I want to scream and shout every time they're on scream kind of thing. But anyway, I think that's going to be our final thoughts for Phoenix Justice for All. I don't think I have really too much else to say. If there's anything, chat, you would like to say in the spoiler section, feel free. But I think a good 40 minute discussion on it <laughs> pretty much laid out everything that I was thinking of. So, again, music was okay. I don't have, like, any big complaints. Yeah. I'll just leave it at, hmm, yes, yeah. I can't really think of anything else, I guess. Just, yeah, it was rough to get through. I'm hoping the third game has more interesting villains. I feel like where this game kind of fails compared to the first and the second game is that there were like semi-ambiguous villains in one of the cases at least. And I just feel like some of the impact of the game is kind of lost on like really stupid plot points. Like this game had the one where you- oh that's where I forgot to mention too. The whole court trial with uh, the second case where you're trying to convince people that because she has a European car, people drive on the opposite side because that's where the steering wheel is. That was also a pretty dumb plot point. Trying to like bring out- we had to bring out like two or three pieces of evidence. I'm like, why do we have to prove people in Europe drive on the other side of the road? <laughs> just like, like, what? Just why? Chris saying, this game didn't make me not want to see the third game more from the series, but I hope they do better than this. The trials don't take over seven hours real time to complete due to stalling. Yeah, that final case, I could see why people... I, weirdly, I did look it up between stream. A lot of people actually like the final case. To me, to me, that is like the hottest of hot takes. So I just want you to know, there, there are people that defend the final case of this game. Basically, no one defends the clown case. The whole where the oh that was one thing we forgot to mention the clown case where like the cloth just happened to land in a certain way so it hit a symbol so the other witness wouldn't be able to see it from that angle so it looked like they disappeared kind of thing that was pretty dumb that that was a huge suspension of disbelief we were like oh come on like and it and it just so happened the mantle caught when it fell, when the person came over, so that way it obscured the other thing, so that way you couldn't see it with this person. But then, you know, it, it explained why it looked like the person flew away, and things like that. Just, ugh. The final case had stakes and drama to it, but it was kind of weak and slow. Yeah, like, maybe if it didn't involve stalling and they actually provide, like, other people... That, like, actual feasible killers, maybe it would have been more interesting. Like, wouldn't it have been more interesting, chat? Like, they had, like, a whole show with the Steel Samurai. Why weren't the other people that were in the Steel Samurai show potential killers? Wouldn't that have been much better? Like, you you know it's probably someone on the stage, but it's not, like, the obvious winner of the Steel Samurai did it kind of thing. Because the only other person they really talked about was Will Powers. Yeah, I think what really dragged down this case a lot is, as I said before, they repeated a lot of gimmicks. So, like, for example, for more specific information, other than lot of heart taking a photo and you have to go through and do this to prove that it's not really what you see. Wendy Oldbag literally saying she saw somebody go by her, but it was just the person in costume, and that person in costume was secretly the other person doing something else. They literally did that in the first game. Did we really need to do it in the second game as well, verbatim? Where it's the same plot point, where it's not the person you think it is? Like, did they really have to do that? Like, again, things like that where, like, I'm not even saying, like, it's unique in the, like, mystery or genre in general. Like, they, it was literally, like, two cases ago, or three cases ago in the Phoenix universe, and they're already repeating the gimmick. Like, that's so bad. But anyway, that's officially all I have to say with that. Might as well just have the murder weapon be a secret clock again. Oh yeah, they didn't have that character, which I'm kind of thankful for because there were too many joke characters. There were way too many joke characters. I would have been okay with him as a cameo, briefly. But not like as- if he was another defendant, that would have been kind of annoying, not gonna lie. But anyway. I think with that chat, those are the final thoughts for Phoenix Wright Justice for All. So I guess with that, we're going to say 
thank you for watching and hopefully the next game is much 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 better than this one